In this episode of Mind Pump, your favorite fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners just like you. And the way we open the episode like is me? we talk about current events, we mention scientific studies, sometimes we mention our sponsors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of this entire episode. So we open up the episode by talking about how we are currently in the absolute worst shape of our life. Uh, we don't necessarily look. I'm glad like, we finally admitted. It. Yeah, we don't look like fitness and health uh, podcast hosts at uh, hosts at the moment, um, and we are using hoses. more. <laughs> I can't yeah. talk properly. Big today. hoses, and uh, we are using pre workouts much more frequently than we normally do. Now, pre workout supplements are designed to give you a little boost of energy. They typically contain caffeine, and they typically have other performance enhancing agreements like uh, ingredients like uh, beta alanine or citrulline, which is supposed to help with blood flow. One of our favorite pre-workout supplements is made by Legion. Legion is a company that makes a lot of performance-enhancing, bodybuilding, muscle-building, and health supplements. They have protein powders, they have bars, and they have pre-workouts like Pulse. Now, of course, because you are a Mind Pump listener, you get a discount. So here is your hookup. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-U-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash Mind Pump. If you use the code MINDPUMP at checkout, you get 20% off your first order. If you're a returning customer, you get double rewards points every time you use the Mind Pump code. Then we talked about the future of gyms. It looks like states are getting closer, closer to reopening up some of their businesses. Are gyms going to be like they used to be? Or are they going to be different? Open our gyms! Uh, then we talked about Adam's addictions, one of them being... Magic Spoon Cereal. A.K.A. Uh, magic Box. My bad. That was really bad yeah. there. But uh, Adam is eating all of our Magic Spoon Cereal because he is a pig and because Magic Spoon <laughs> is delicious. Now, you might be thinking, why is a fitness podcast promoting a cereal? Hmm. Because it tastes amazing. It's like kid cereal. And it's high in protein. It's yeah, actually lots a, of protein. a high protein cereal. It tastes really good. And it has little to no sugar. No joke, this stuff is crazy and amazing, and it's got great natural ingredients. That's why it's magical. So here's how you get the Mind Pump hookup. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump. You'll get an automatic discount. You'll also get free shipping. By the way, there's a 100% happiness guarantee, meaning if you're not a fan, they'll refund you. No questions asked. Uh, then we got into... Uh, keep going, Doug. Thank you. Then we got into talking about how JLo got sued for posting a picture of herself. That's kind of weird. Mm. I talked about how Facebook is removing protest pages, uh, those commies. Yeah. Then we talked about weird diets in history, and then Adam made a TV viewing admission. So he got a little vulnerable there. Ooh. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question was, this person's confused. Uh, they've heard on the show that you know progressive overload means you need to add weight, other uh, to the bar. Other times we've said things like, you know, slow the rep down, get more connected to the muscle. Like, which one of those yeah. things should you focus on? All these things? If you want to keep uh, getting results. So we kind of break it down. The next question, this person says, look, all this extra time right now, every day I'm doing a bunch of crazy stuff. I'm doing yoga, hiking and walking and strength training. Is that too much? Juggling too. The next question, this person's working from home right now and wants to know if they should work out barefoot. Any benefits to doing that? And the final question, this person wants to know why their knees cave in when they squat. So every time they squat, their knees come together as they go lower. What's going on? Is that a problem? And if it is a problem, how can you fix it? Also, this month, all month long, two of our equipment-free programs, in other words, two programs that we have that require no equipment at all, MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro are both 50% off. Now, both of these are correctional exercise in nature. MAPS Prime takes you through a self-assessment, you assess your own body, and then you figure out how to design your specific priming session. Priming is another word for warm-up. Now, the reason why we say priming is because it's much better than a warm-up. You figure out your individual needs, you get the muscles to fire that you need, you correct the posture that you have problems with. Then when you go into your workout, it's much more effective. Your squats and your deadlifts and your push-ups and your bench presses all feel better because your body is set up better because you did 10 minutes of proper priming beforehand. Now, MAPS Prime Pro is all about correctional exercise and mobility. You pick the joint you have an issue with, shoulder or hip or ankle, you follow the test, figure out what movements work best for you, and then you work on 10 to 15 minutes of mobility every single day through MAPS Prime Pro 
to move better, alleviate pain, and then through that, build more muscle and then directly burn more body fat. Now, both of them are half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code PRIME50. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. Dude, can I just say, I'm just going to make an, an, I'm gonna make an admission on behalf of Mind Pump right now to our audience. Mm. Oh, oh, here Since we go. Since we've been doing this podcast now, and we've been running this company now for five years, right? Yeah. Half a decade. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, This is easily the worst shape we've all been in the last, <laughs> the last five years. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Hey, I, we're the worst no, shape, dude. I, I admit it. I, it's uh, the worst. I, I, so I can't move very well I right can't now. even defend that because yesterday I got on my rower, <clears throat> and... And I, and I think what sparked it, I think it was maybe last week or I don't know, one of the recent podcasts, you know, I was talking, to, we, we answered a question and I was talking about how, you know, oh, we talk about how we, we never do cardio. I'm like, I always do something where I still want to test my capabilities. It's, and, I, and I do that, you know, intermittently, probably uh, the longest I ever go is maybe a, a month of not, I try and do it every other week or so, whatever, where I do like a mile run or a sprint on the rower and just to make sure I've got good good cardio yeah. still, right? And I did the I did a two thousand meter sprint on the rower, and I thought I was gonna die. Now, how long is that? <laughs> a two thousand meters is pretty good. I mean, it takes a, it takes about I think it took me like seven or eight minutes to knock that out. So, so just, but yeah, seven eight minutes of like it's like a, like it, to me it's a two thousand meter to me, and I don't know if this is true. I'm sure somebody will cr uh, correct me. It feels like what it feels like if I run a mile. Mm. You know, it's kind of about mm -hmm. the, about the about the same feel, and so that's kind of my gauge. Like, can I rip this thing? Did you stop and then lay down? Oh, I was, <laughs> I, I bent over and like my lungs were Burning. on fire, and I was yeah. like, oh my god! But I, I the, the thing is though, it always does this. It it, it, it kick starts me. Like like mm -hmm. okay, this is. I mean, it, I'm wearing the Fitbit today. I'm like okay, what I what and what I attribute this feeling to, or why you know to your point, Sal, why we are in the worst shape we've ever been in right now is I've been guesstimating how little I've been moving. I haven't been Dude. tracking. And you, we know I'm a big tracker, right? I it's started, the loss of movement that's been a real impact. I started tracking, okay? If I don't do, this is a true story now, if I don't do one and a half hours of walking a day, and typically it's three 30-minute walks every day, yeah. if I don't do that, I won't get to 2,000 steps. Yeah. Oh, I, no true. No joke. Three walks a day puts me at nine to ten thousand steps a day. Yeah, that's how bad it's getting. Because yeah, it's just man. you're not. Where are you going? You go. You, we, we sit here. And my and we, wife just started baking again. It's like, dude, I'm fucked. Dude, that's all her fault. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, well, Cookies. What I what what I what made me like I really, uh, you know, start the Fitbit and and do this and a little concerned is like, man, I'm like, I'm really not eating bad, and I and I'm really good about like, okay. I'm not moving as much as I am. So, and because I've tracked for so long, that's probably means I need to pull out this, pull out that. I can't get away with this. And so I kind of have like a, a pretty good idea of how I need to adjust my eating. And, and because of that, I think that's mitigated the damage. But there's definitely been damage that has been done the last two months. And I'm like still going, scratching my head, going, damn, yeah. dude, like I can't get away with anything we're, right now. We're entering into the space. Like but before, I'm not moving. You well, know? see, like before, if we were at the beach, people were like, yeah, those guys work out. Hey, you know, those guys, guys. Those guys look like they work out. Yeah. Now, if we were at the beach, people were like, are you an engineer? He, yeah, he used to work <laughs> out. Did you used to work out? Yes. I bet you were back in the day. That like a just fit, like a blob of meat. Like a fit <laughs> That's dude. what they look yeah. at. Were you an athlete meat. back in high school 20 yeah. years ago? <laughs> you could be moved. <sighs> yeah. Dude, I'm, so for me, I mean, I'm consistent with work, with lifting. So at least I'm doing that, but I am getting random injuries and I don't know why. I hurt my neck. Don't know what happened. I worked out, and I didn't even work out that hard. I thought to myself, I'm going to do a moderate workout today. <laughs> I'm going to go in there. I'm just going to get a little bit of a pump. That's what I'm going to do. Mm. Did it. Woke up the next day, and you guys know, for the past two days, I'm like, man, my neck is, what did I do? At least back in the day, I hurt myself when I did something cool. Yeah. You know, I'm like, hey, I hit a PR yesterday, but I hurt my back. Yeah. Now it's like, how'd you hurt your neck? I have no idea. You know, it's a movement. You talking about this right now reminds me too of this is how I like to use pre workout. And this is why I like oh, to. Oh, dude, I am using Pulse consistently now. I never use, yeah. you know that. I'm not a huge pre workout guy. I try to, you know, use it when I need it. And, and right now I'm using it on a regular basis. So I'm 
so I, it's like I need that extra fire right now to get me. And it, and of course, it's because I'm not moving, right? If it's a, if there is a day, because they're happening still every once in a while, where I do have an active day, where I do some cardio, I go for long walks with Katrina, and I am. I'm super productive. Those days, I must be moving 10,000 plus steps, and I'll be able to track and be for sure soon. But, you know, if it's not a day like that really easily, like you said, Sal, I could I could probably sit around all day and I'm not doing not, nothing. I'm working and doing things like that. And that's yeah. where I think we're, and I know people can relate to this. Yeah, you feel, you're busy. Yeah. You're, you're just not active. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And there's a huge difference of, you know, being busy and then actually being physically active. And, you know, we have, uh, as a trainer for two decades, it was really easy to always be active because my job required picking up and putting down weights and moving around in a gym for people yep. on a bad day, I would hit 10,000 steps. Well, I'm constantly thinking about having to move because it's in the back of my head all the time. But then I'll go do like, you know, a five, 10 minute uh, sesh where, where I'm lifting weights or I'm outside like moving around, but uh, it's not intense at all. I'm like, oh, I'll just build off the momentum of it. And there's been no spike in momentum, you know, in terms of like <laughs> intensity. It's been the same pathetic fucking, you know, three or four, uh, five, 10 minute uh, exercise workouts that I've been Dude, doing. So my kids are like, they're, they're starting to hate me because I'm, if I'm, a, I'm aware of my lack of movement, my kids don't necessarily lift weights consistently. I mean, I've been training my son, you know, relatively consistently, but now that they're doing school at home, mm -hmm. right? If I see my steps and I'm like, wow, I'm at 2,000, yeah. they must be at nothing because they're literally sitting down. So what I'm doing with my kids is I'm taking them on these three walks every day. Yeah. And so my kids are like- Oh, that's all we've been doing, oh, like, walking. Okay, another walk? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you got to do another one. Uh, okay, oh, we're done, right? No, in, in an hour and a half, we're going to do another one. Oh, I don't want to do another one. Oh, it's mobility time, kids. Let's get on yeah. the floor. Yeah. And I'm starting to get on their nerves, and so I'm trying to figure out ways uh, to you know, make it I need to bring fun. the intensity back. Yeah, so for I'm, sure. I'm thinking maybe I'll sprinkle some uh, pre-workout pulse in my, <laughs> my daughter's- uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put it in but you know what? <laughs> this is what's great about when you don't always use it, you know, and then you, when I do, right. it, it just lights a fire. It's pretty me. strong. Yeah. It's what is 350 milligrams of caffeine for yeah, a full, yeah. full so serving. Yeah. Get those well, eyes wide open for sure. In the beta, do you like the beta alanine feel? I love that feeling. I don't like that. You don't actually. like the tingly? That is the one. That's my knock on all pre workouts because every pre workout has Such it. It's a baby. It just it makes my face itch. Yeah, I Isn't hate, that great? No, yeah, I love it. Like I like like if it, I feel it a little it's like bit drugs, but it makes it so bad that like <laughs> I'll I'll find myself like rubbing my face like crazy and nah, then you got to deal with it. Don't like that. Yeah, you, you got to take it out on the weights, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> well, I I you know what I I do notice this because this has happened before. If I take it with the intention of like getting right into my workout and then like something comes up and then it's not, I don't work out for like two hours later. Yeah. It really makes it worse if you're not, if you get right into moving, it, yeah. it, it, it kind of nullifies that, <laughs> that tingly feeling. Yeah. If, if, does that make sense? Like yeah. it's not really bad. It's like a little tingle. It's not, but it's not yeah. too bad. If you take it and you don't work out, yeah, it's like, it makes my face feel like I, I, I want to peel well, my skin off. It's uh, weird. Well, to make things worse, just I'm going to crap everybody out even worse, is <laughs> oh, I'm sitting at again. home and my daughter's looking at me and she's just like, Papa, you need a haircut. You look like Sonic. Yeah. I, there's, <laughs> I'm, I haven't got like my haircut Sonic. in a while and it's, it's coming in over the ears. It's just a lot on the top. Like a wolf man. And so I'm, I'm stuck in this situation here. When are you going to join the club? Well, mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the question here. I'd like to have some feedback from the audience is maybe I'll do a poll on my Instagram. Should I shave it or just let the fuck well, grow? Well, dude, didn't was it you that brought up like they're they're starting to think about rolling out more essential businesses or like like classifying new yeah. ones? I thought I saw barbers being in there and like uh, uh, theaters and uh, I, I thought that there was like some entertainment. That California were, hasn't released that yet, but okay. other states are putting gyms and barbers and I forgot what else. Yeah, in gyms the, in the in the in the reopening. I hope process. they do that. Yeah, because I man, my kids too. Like they're they don't want to shave their head because I. Shaved my, my head, and then that like completely told like they were like, no, no, nope, we're not doing it now. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> like, oh, terrible. what? It looks bad or what? Like, what's wrong? With it? No, yeah. they don't want to do it. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm getting over it, dude. I feel like you know what I feel like. I feel like I should be in a in a in a 1970s like movie with Italians. You ever watch those like 70s like, like <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. Staying Alive or Saturday Night oh, Fever? Yeah. yeah, you're like you guys need a haircut. <laughs> that was a style back then, but right yeah, now. Yeah. That's what's happening. Was that that guy, Tony Danza? Who's the boss? The, exactly. You look just like that. Yeah, it's starting to grow over my ears. It's yeah. weird. I don't like it. Totally. Anyway, I'm really, hair, cur hair I'm really curious on how, uh, and I'm excited because, right, we have, uh, we're 
interviewing Mark Mastroff again. Uh, we're reaching out to our good buddy Scott. I know you talked. We talked to Bree the other day from Bay Clubs. Like, really excited about hearing what a lot of these gyms are going to do when they open it. Because I can't imagine this. We 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 get out of shelter in place. And then gyms open up, and then everybody's going to rush to the gym and all be working out during prime time again, and that'd be okay. Like that doesn't make sense to no. me. No, it can't be like that. They'll right? never be the same. No, gonna, they, no, they'll never be. It'll never be the same. They're going to have to change how they operate because their models are are based off of an old way of letting people. And the other thing is too, I don't think the market wants that. I really don't think consumers are going to want to go into a crowded gym as it was before with all the fear. So I, I wanted to bring this up because this will bring up a good uh, you know, em- economics discussion around this is we had a, a post on the forum this morning about this, but not exactly this, but I think it ties all in, is what is that going to do to prices, right? So if gyms, will, won't they be forced to have to increase prices in order to sustain the income that they were getting before because the old model mm-hmm. was built off of people paying for a membership and basically yeah, not dirt. Yeah. For hardly anything. And most people not using it and then being okay with it being crowded and right, 30 ex- people in a class. Exactly. Right. So now they're going to have to limit the amount of people that can even come in. So my thought is they're really going to say, wow, we're going to, if you want to come to this gym, it's going to cost you a hundred and something dollars a month. It will. Can, you right. think that's gonna happen? I 100. percent And yeah. like come in by appointment, you know, or yeah. so you like got to sign up like for well, your slot, or you just limit it. You limit it by making it really high. If yeah. you, you if just make it so high that people only the people that really really feel it worth to pay that if, type of money. If your gym allowed at any given busy moment, let's say 150 people in there at a time, prime time, 150 people, you're gonna cut that down by at least a third. So now it's 50. How are they going to continue to run a profit? They're going to have to charge more. Now, here's my argument, okay? Here's here's my good argument. Most people, look, most of you guys listening right now pay 150 bucks for your cell phone, okay? You think it's expensive to pay more than 20 bucks a month for a gym. That's just because the market told you it was expensive. The reality is 150 bucks for a gym, total, if you use it, one of the best investments you could possibly make. So I think the prices are going to go up. What I do think is you're going to get more of the the, the serious, consistent people are going to be the ones that they focus on again, mm-hmm. like it used to be back in the day. Yep. And I do see that the home gym market and the home fitness market is going to take off yep. because all those people who have the price set in their mind that they paid 20 bucks a month at one point, now they're like 150. Forget that. I'm going to buy a stationary bike or I'm going to buy you know some weights at home or something like now, that. That's what if, I think. If your theory is correct, then it's almost certain then. A company that is completely built off of that side, Planet Fitness, would go bankrupt if they don't change. Yes, yeah. I if mean, they don't pivot, I mean, their their model is the extreme version of Twenty Four Hour Fitness and those other boxes, right? So they majority of the you know nineteen to thirty five dollar a month, you know twenty thousand to fifty thousand square foot gyms. The model is is mostly based off of the people that aren't coming. Right? Mm-hmm. Can we agree and, on that? Yes, and no, and no limits to when when they do show up. Right, it's just gonna get packed. And and so now they will have to pivot to catering to the the people that are consistent and come, mm-hmm. and and then also so, prices will so increase. So two strategies right. that I foresee: either one, they look at their peak time and figure out what they can maintain while maintaining the the social distancing, mm-hmm. and then they'll say something like, let's say their average member pays ten bucks a month, for example. This is just an even even number. Okay, we need to reduce our usage at peak hours by, you know, down to one third. So that means we need to we're going to lose two thirds of our members. So now our average goes up to thirty bucks a month. That's how we make up the difference. Or here's the other strategy: you are going to start to see memberships that have times on them. So you're going to buy a membership, and right. they're going to say, here are the two times you can work out between two and four or seven, whatever. And it's more expensive. If you want to come at from four to 8 PM, which is prime time, mm-hmm. you're going to pay 45 bucks a month. If you want to come and work out at, you know, noon to two, which is I can dead, see them starting to pitch it's that. 10 bucks a month. That's yeah. what I think. I think they're going to, you're going to start to pay more to get access during busy times. Cause it's going to be limited. And then the slow right. times will just be cheaper, which I think is a smart strategy. If I'm a gym, that's how, that's how I would present it. Now right? it's real easy to say that, but what I think, and again, this is why I can't wait for this conversation. Well, members are going to be pissed. Well, I mean, when you're, when you're Deal so, when you're I mean, so heavily yeah. leveraged, like, like many of these are, and it's a race to how many of these facilities can you build up? Right. And <clears throat> if you've built the model, like uh, planet fitness on $19 a month, I don't think that's even an option. 
I don't think it's feasible. I don't think mm. it's possible. I think your model has been built on right. the tens of thousands of members that are paying that $19 and you all of a sudden putting restrictions or increasing their rate, mm -hmm. I would think would for, for sure at least lose 50% right off the bat. Agreed. Minimum. I yeah, agree. Yeah, and this yeah, is yeah. why- That's enough to shut everything down. Look, the old the, when the gym industry first started, the people that you focused on were the ones that used your gym consistently. Right. The, the, the very consistent, hardcore users. Okay, the models changed- to where the hard, consistent, you know, members, the members that showed up all the time to work out actually became a liability. They're, they're wearing down your equipment. The ones that are making us money are the people that pay and show up every once in a while or never. Mm -hmm. So the model is going to have to change again. Is that going to result in a lot of closes and shutdowns? Absolutely. You are going to see what's going to happen because the market signals are going to change. You're going to see a correction in the market. What I don't want to see is bailouts. What I don't want to see are gym companies yeah. getting bailouts from government so we don't lay people off. All that's going to do is it's going to continue to waste resources, let the market uh, work itself out. 100% agree because what will happen, the ones that do survive, and, and this, is, this is good news for the consumer, is they're really going to have to service the people. They're, the amenities are going to be better. The the service that they provide for you, the information of and course. knowledge they give you, the all of that is going to have to be better because they're going to be asking for more money from everybody. So, yeah. yep. really, as a consumer, you may think, oh, because it's going to go up X amount of dollars, it's going to be that's is going to piss you off initially. But the reality is, it'll actually make things very competitive to get your to get your service. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're going to see a lot of companies go above and beyond. I, I think you because they're going to have to. And right. I you know, um, it'll be very interesting. I think we're going to wash out. We're going to see a lot of companies have to close down. Uh, I think that cleanliness, it, it's always been important, but we've we've kind of put up with dirty, crowded gyms. You know, we, we just put up with it, right? Yeah. That's not going to happen anymore. No, that's not going to cut it nope. anymore. That that whole model and that look of, you know, just cramming a gym and, you know, we'll get to all the, the repairs and issues and all that, like down the road. No, you have to like overdo it, over service, make sure everybody feels like this is a sterile, clean environment, totally. all that stuff. If you're a scared consumer, this whole pandemic's going on and you're walking into a gym, the number one thing that you want to feel is this is really safe and clean. So it's going to be spotless. It's got to be really clean. They have to, and they're going to do that either because they're forced to by laws, which uh, I'm not going to put it past state governments to pass uh, laws. I'm pretty sure, I'm Cali sure yeah. California will probably lead that. Oh, they, they love it. They yeah, love they legislating love everything. Yeah. Or because the consumer is going to demand it. Imagine walking into like right now, post you know uh, COVID, right? You walk into a gym and it's packed and there's sweat on machines. You're going to walk right out. Hell no, I'm not going in there. So you're going to have to walk in and have this experience of like, wow, this is really clean and really safe. And that costs money. So for sure, it's going to totally change. But the home gym market's going to explode. Oh, I that's think because of that. It. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at somebody like our partner PRX. I mean, they are just going to <sighs> destroy it because their model was already based off of what to, to sell people on. Listen, we can get you this at home gym that can fold away into into the, your garage that takes up no space yeah. and you can do payments on it just like you would for a membership and when basically what within a year you've mm -hmm. basically paid off your now you own your own equipment yeah and that yeah. was off of the old rates mm -hmm. so right. as prices increase to have a gym people are going to be like oh my god it's a no brainer gym, to have this gym equipment yeah. prices are going to go down because you're going to see so many more people come into the market they're going to be able to cut the margins even smaller more competition so i think that's going to come down in price as they start to meet the demand. Because right now the demand's so high that gym equipment is expensive. Yeah, six hundred and seventy percent increase. Oh dude, you go That's on insane. Go on the Facebook market and buy Oof. a set of dumbbells, hundred bucks. Wasn't it you who yeah. said your your cousin or whatever said that people were even hustling? Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. It's yeah, a big scam in people. There's a lot of scams yeah. where they'll take a hundred bucks and you don't get the dumbbells. What? Because there's such a demand. Anytime there's a high demand, you get the, the hucksters. Did you jump did, in there. did you hear the guy that did? A, I saw uh, this guy. I think it was Tom Billy who interviewed him. I saw the little clip of it. I thought this was pretty. He was trying to share with people like there's opportunity right now to to create a business if you're out of a job. Of course. And he was talking about how he just started like finding things for people and brokering it. And one of the examples is he'd find someone they're like, uh, yeah, I can't find, I want a set of dumbbells. Well, what's, what, how much do you want? Oh, I want a 40 pound set of uh, 40 pounds dumbbells. And he just got on the phone for that person, 
hustled around until he finally found like a gym that was closing totally. who had 40. He negotiated the price. Then he went back to the guy and said, listen, they want 10 more dollars than what you're saying. And, th and then he made yeah. the the, mar the difference mm. and then was completely hands off. He took the That's money smart. ahead of time, wow. paid the money over there, had them shipped to them. Then he was done. It's like, I mean, it wasn't a lot of money he made. I think it was like 20 bucks or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. But the point was he didn't have to spend anything to do it. And then he found it for that person, like just to ex explain that, listen, there's opportunity. You're doing something. Yeah, no, I just, yeah. I was, this is what I was trying to share with the trainers. Uh, where was this at? I think it was, I don't know if I was on an interview or what, where I shared this at is I would be doing things uh, like I used to do this for clients and for sure I would be doing this right now if I was a trainer is well, once a week uh, on Fridays, I used to meal prep for a couple clients at a time. I only had like, I kept about two or four that I was doing this for, not a lot, just a, but it was because it was a premium thing I was doing where I would charge them. And I think I charged 200 or 250 uh, and I would grocery shop for them, prepare all of their meals, package way for their diet and then like bring to their house. And that was like this. Edit. Everything's accounted for macros. Yeah, everything. everything. Yeah. I did everything for. I mean, the shopping, right? Sure. So I did everything for them, and basically just charged a premium on what the groceries would cost. I would factor in, okay, groceries are going to cost me like one fifty. It's going to take me a couple hours mm -hmm. to do the, and then I would do a couple clients. So if I was doing two or three clients, I could do bulk. So I could make a massive pot of yams. I could do a ton of chicken at once, and so I'm do I'm doing it for three or four clients. I'm making a hundred something dollar premium on everybody, and they're happy as shit because they're like, I didn't have to go to the grocery store right now. Especially right now. Especially right now. Uh, right? I didn't yeah. go to the grocery store. I didn't have to make any of my meals. My diet is all ready mm -hmm. for me. And then my and my trainer brings it to my doorstep. I mean, there's there's money to be made right now on the people that still have jobs and have uh, have incomes and you don't have, and you don't have to gouge them for there's it. Different market, there's different market there's different market signals and demands right now for sure. There's like yeah. higher demand. I mean, obvious stuff like you know masks. You know, higher demand for masks than ever before. Home gym equipment more than ever before. I, I see more DoorDash. You know deliveries than I've ever seen in my entire life. That's a that's a high demand. Anyway, speaking yeah. of food, uh, I'm all excited because we get our shipment of our you know Magic Box cereal, and so I see this yesterday, and I'm like, oh cool, I can't wait to go look in the box. <laughs> and then and 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 then I go look, and they're gone. And I know who took all the cereal. That's because you, it's you, you dude. think it's me, but no. No, it's not. It's Adam. It's not That's me. because you don't even know it's fucking Magic Spoon. No, first That's of all, what? what are you talking about? Because <laughs> you, uh, you call it Magic Box. So magic I fucking spoon. take it because I box. take it. So. Well, the box that it came in was Magic Box. <laughs> then you got the Magic it's Spoon. It's magic. I just, it disappears. Yeah. Bro, really. you eat all the Magic Spoon cereal? Presto oh. change. What are you going to do with six boxes of cereal? Well, you know what it is, is they send the variety packs and I want to swoop up all the blueberry because blueberry is so hard to get, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. Like, it's I, so hard to how get. Many, I was how many arm wrestle you for how many, how many bowls? Be honest. Don't You got to tell the truth now because I'll ask Katrina. Uh, how many bowls of cereal are you eating a day? Okay, like honest. how far back are we going right now? Or, or just like how consistent, since, like since, a, a string of like two weeks, how, since, like how many days in a row have you eaten it? Since COVID-19, there's probably only been one or two days that I didn't have it. <laughs> like every yeah, day? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's my thing, it's dude. Like it's a comfort like, thing. So, like, okay, this, I'll tell you. Now, like, is it a big bowl that you're eating or uh, small? Uh, it's a pretty good size. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's probably good. It's probably good. 40 grams of protein, let's just say. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, wow. so this is kind of my, 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 how I've restricted calories. I'm, I'm only eating like once, maybe twice a day. And then, and what I'm, I'm fasting a lot in the morning because I'm not very active. So this is kind of what a typical day is looking like right now. I get up, I have my cup of coffee. Uh, I don't eat for uh, most of the afternoon until uh, like probably four or five. That's when Katrina and I have our dinner. She's cooking really good, healthy meals out of the Instapot. Like I've just had our last night was the chicken, rice, avocado, like kind of salsa ball thing that she makes. Super good. Um, I have a, a pretty good, I have a, a very big portion. So it's kind of like I'm eating two meals or three meals in one. So that's my meal. And then that's normally around five and then probably about eight or nine, I'm getting hungry again because I haven't had much to eat in the day. And that's normally Magic Spoon right now. So it's, kind of, yeah. it's been kind of the, the deal. Well, I can't talk too much shit because they're, uh, like I'd mentioned, like baking and uh, cookies and all this. kind. Of, and so I've been able to avoid some of the days by eating a bowl of a Magic Spoon well, instead. It like helps me like, wow, like all dude, this I just smells well, it feels of like a baking. Treat. I just, yeah. It feels like I'm having a dessert. Bro, no, I just, it's very tasty. I picture you, both you guys, with a big bowl in front of you, the milk and the cereal, and then you're so excited to eat it that you hold your spoon like this. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, like <laughs> with a shovel. The, the fist. Yeah. That's yeah, the cereal. That's the cereal grip. That's for sure. I have a bigger spoon just specifically Okay, for so 
So I'm actually so, the opposite. Yeah. And I used to do the. So here's a good part. No, of don't tell me you get a small spoon. I to do. Trick yourself. I do. <laughs> that's so, stupid. No, no, that's not why. That's not the theory. But I used to do this with ice cream. And oh, by I the hate way, because they don't get enough milk. By the way, in contrast. Since we've had Magic Spoon as a sponsor. I can count on one hand how many total times I've even touched ice cream, and that's Halo or anything. Like I just yeah. oh, that's so it's really curbed that craving that I have. Mm -hmm. um, but I used to do this with ice cream, and I do it now with the magic spoon. I do a small spoon so it savors it. Oh my, it bro, takes, that is it such takes, a, it takes longer. That's such a weird it takes, sight. The it's, big old dude with the little it's tiny. So it's satisfying. Like, ah, it's like, like a little teaspoon. A nice it's a big, teaspoon. You know, yeah. Justin, this is how he eats it. Yum, yum, yum. No, yum, 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 yum. I feel see, and I feel if I get one of those big spoons, you know, like a, like a gravy service. Like, like, like his little pinky. I feel out, like Justin you know, would have like a ladle, you know, yeah. like one of those fucking oh, big yeah. ass, like for like I, a I would, big soup spoon. I would call it a man. Oh, you, you known it. That's, you a, know that's this, a man dude. spoon. Yeah, that's, yeah. A man that's spoon. what he's using. Yeah. You know what my bowl is the one you use for like popcorn. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so are you guys hearing what's with the, the social media news that's happening? I well, got two I got two pieces of news for you. I got uh, uh, J Lo is a, did you see the J Lo thing? No, what happened? Oh, that's not what you're talking about? No, 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 no. Oh, she's just she's getting sued. I yeah, it's funny. It's a picture she posted in 2017. Of, of what? It's just a picture of herself. But here's what's happening. I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's like unrealistic a, butt expectations. No, 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 no. She's being sued by the photographer for posting it. Oh, yeah. You don't. You know. You know that, right? When a photographer own rights. Yeah, a photographer it, yeah. takes a photo of you. You don't know it's you, but you don't fucking own that, which yeah. I think is always fucking weird yeah, to me. Such a weird. Yeah, thing. yeah. They so she po she posted an image that a photographer took of her, and he's coming after her for $150,000. Wow. Yeah. That's but, all right. She that's, just, that wasn't your she'll news. She'll look under the cushion on the couch and get the hundred yeah. grand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To uh, no, so here's this. Uh, Facebook has removed uh, COVID-19 pro uh, protest pages. So people are organizing on Facebook to protest these shelter-in-place you know, orders, right? Uh -huh. So they're like, hey, let's meet up. We're going to go to the, you know, the, the capital of the state or whatever, and we're going to protest that we want to go back to work. So Facebook has wiped them all out. You're not allowed to meet and talk about these. Oh, and free speech and yeah, assembly? Dude, no, I mean, they're, they're a private company, so they can do this, but I wonder if that's going to make it worse. Because if you're somebody that's protesting, you might automatically think, there might be a tendency to think that this is a bit of a false, you know, what we're doing isn't right, and maybe there's a little bit of conspiracy. Now Facebook's wiping them. That's only going to strengthen your, your oh, yeah. fear. It makes it look way worse. It might make it look worse. And then yeah, the other one is... is I, a, a, I don't know where I stand on that, right? Like, I I would never want government to mandate what they can and can't do because it's a private company. Right. I think the way to handle that... And so I think people sometimes, too, they 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 gripe, they moan, they, they get mm -hmm. pissed off about things like that. And if you are mad, then get off Facebook. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. the best way that you can protest a, a company doing that is don't give them your service, don't give them your information. Like what we don't want them to do, is, we don't want everyone to be pissed off about that this isn't mm -hmm. fair and then we want government to mandate that they have to do things. Like, no, I don't want them involved in that yeah. at all. No, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's a private company. They can do that. But what it does is it's a very interesting fine line between – Okay, we want to get rid of this because we don't like it. Is that going to make? Is that going to actually add fuel to this movement? Because a lot of these people are like they're they're censoring us, they're silencing us, they're keeping us in our homes. And then what ends up happening? Oh my God, Facebook took them all off. I told you, I told mm -hmm. you. It's, and so it strengthens this. Well, this I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see a rise in that no matter what because of all the numbers that are coming out. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we were told that. If we did everything perfect and everybody did shelter in place, yeah. the lowest amount of deaths that we would see is two hundred thousand. If we come under a hundred thousand, which we're gonna it looks like we're gonna be fifty or sixty, yeah, that's dramatically different. Yeah, but you know what? We got to be. So this is the problem when the when these scientists come out and say that um, what they need to do, and I know why they don't do this because they don't want people. They want people to listen. But the truth is, their models are only as good as the numbers that they can work with. Right. And if they can't test everybody, like I mean everybody, everybody who, who isn't sick, anybody who's who's alive, if they can't do that, all they can work with is the people that they that they've already counted. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's going to be skewed because most of the numbers are coming from people who are going yeah, to the hospital. You, yeah, but yeah, stop right there though. You say of course they'd be skewed, but I'll tell you right now that ninety percent of the the country did not think that way. They didn't think because that, they didn't present it that way. No, exactly. That's yeah. my. This was a big argument that I used to. I was having with my my two best friends yeah. who were like the the sky is falling, freaking out. I'm like, whoa. 
Here's the thing. The number I am watching is deaths. I've said that since day one. I am watching deaths right now because I'm very aware of all the other diseases and how many people die every single day and every single yeah. year from that. And as that number continues to creep, that's when I'll start to get nervous. But the all these predictions and numbers and graphs on something that we are that so... That percentage has gone way down well, based dr- off dr- of that latest Dramatically. Study. It's supposed to. I mean, it's, that, that's, that should be expected that that'll yeah. happen. But here's the other part. Like I had this conversation with, uh, with Lane the other day and I said, man, it looks like... There, you know, LA had some tests. Stanford did one up here in the Bay Area. There was there was a couple others in other places, and they're finding that the population infection rate is like between two to four percent. Meaning, there's way more people, anywhere between fifty to eighty times more people infected yeah. than we realize, which brings the death rate way down. Right. And and Lane said something that I thought was really smart. He says, "Yeah, that's true, but the infection rate with this virus is so much higher than the flu. So although the death rate might be, it may actually be like the flu." People get infected way faster, so oh, you still will have more. One hundred percent, and that's what I've said my to my buddies. Like I've since day one, two, I've been on the side of us taking extreme precaution because of that, because yeah. of the infection rate is so crazy. But the reality is, and what they're finding is that it's almost inevitable that we're all going to end up getting it at one point. Probably mm-hmm. because of the infection rate is so high, we eventually will have to go back. It will probably end up getting everybody, and the death rate will be extremely low, and everyone's going to end up having it. Mm-hmm. So the question is, and the question that I've always had is, was the the way we did this the best way to do it, and would it have been smarter to look at the people that are at the highest risk? Those people yeah, stay home, and right. then and then that'll be the speculation forever. We'll, we'll never know the answer, and they'll always look back, and you'll always have people on either side. So uh, who knows? So well, speaking of bad ahead. ideas, um, over history, there's been a lot of interesting diets, and I wanted to bring these up for, <laughs> okay. for a while, just because, you know, just for, just looking at it in terms of where we are right now, we have, what, carnivore diet, we have vegan diet, we have, like, lots of people battling back and forth over all these different methods, right? So there was the avoiding swamps diet. I don't, I'm not sure if you knew about this oh, diet. Wait, wait, wait. How, what is that? Yeah. Just the, avoid swamps? The theory, yes, was a great theory of, of of this, uh, I don't even remember who the guy was, but basically, if you avoided swamps, you noticed that there was a lot of obese people in, around swamps. <laughs> so therefore, avoid swamps, <laughs> lose weight. Okay, love it. Then there's the um, let's see, the tapeworm diet, of course. We which know about that. We know about that. Yeah. Very effective. Actually works. It totally works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the cotton ball diet. Uh, what? You swallow these so it makes you full? Yes. So so that's very similar. There was another thing that came around where it was like, you know, some device that you had that would, would fill up most of your stomach and then it would, you know, make you eat less. What You remember that? No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. doing, they do that with a little inflatable balloon in your stomach. That always so. comes back. So, so uh-huh. pay attention. That'll come back again at some point. Uh, the cigarette diet. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Every time you're hungry, smoke a cigarette. Fan, yeah, just cancer. That actually, you know, yeah, yeah, that works. But then you die. The byproduct. Um, there's the drinking man's diet. My personal favorite. It's just you know, usually whiskey and steak. Uh, oh, it, I've read about that. Have you heard about that? Yes, that yeah. was a diet. The whiskey and steak diet. Whiskey and steak diet. It got oh. hella popular, which I don't know. It's weird. It's like it, like the Mad Men sort of era. <laughs> yeah. I'm imagining. Uh, and then, um, oh shit, this just moved on me. Oh, the, uh, there was the Sleeping Beauty diet. So the you know you sleep more, therefore you don't you're not up and aware and and, and active, so you don't have to mm. eat as much, so you lose weight. <laughs> so the goal is to stay in bed for yeah, like eighteen just sleep. hours, sleep for eighteen hours, <laughs> sleep a day. it off. You know, <laughs> yeah, you'll lose weight eventually. Uh, the vinegar diet. Uh, side effects may include vomiting and diarrhea, but mm. hey, who's Would, who's counting? You still lose weight. Yeah, lose weight. Uh, the Graham diet. So this is the guy that uh, basically was into no sex n- and and just pure veggie. So it was, it, was, it was the first form of like vegetarianism, like mm. the Graham. Di- uh, and so he's also responsible for the Graham crackers. Mm. Uh, that was his contribution <laughs> yeah, to the Don't world. have sex and don't eat a lot of food. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot to ask of people. Uh, then there was the vision diet, which was an interesting one for me. Uh, wear blue glasses, not blue blocker glasses, uh, blue tinted glasses, and that's uh, uh, supposed to suppress your your oh, appetite. That's, that's true. Does it color the food? That is true. Right. It the, won't look. Ape- it won't look appealing. Your food. Interesting. The, the right? color of your food increases its, its palatability, and I've noticed this when I back in the day when I would wear the like orange colored or whatever blue blockers, and I'd eat, and I'd be like, oh. Let me take these off. That's yeah. actually a true one. Yeah, it's interesting. Brilliant. Uh, the chewing diet. So we've talked about this oh, multiple yeah. times. But it's just chew, about like chewing chew more. Chew 40 times per bite it, or something like that. It says 32 times oh, 32, and, and then was. spit out the remains. Oh. So they're not even like uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, swallowing they, it. Yeah, they, they, I think they call that an eating disorder now. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> that would yeah be considered one of those. Um, and then the slimming 
slimming soap diet. Uh, wash away fat with soap. So basically, you you wash it off your body. Damn, uh, that's that's a real that's a real gem. What right the hell there. kind of soap is that? <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Rub ah! your skin off. New sponsor. Yeah. yeah. Why is my skin yeah. burning? <laughs> and more others. But those were the the, the, the top ones. Now I that. wonder how many of those like actually went on to make millions of dollars in book sales and things like that. Do, do most of those do that well? I know the I know like diet books do well. Period. Right? Yeah. I'm imagining the the drinking man's diet did pretty well. Yeah, well, the the tapeworm diets actually you would see lots of ads for those in old magazines, and what it was, it were there were pills. You'd buy oh, pills, and they'd have larva in it, right? They'd have tapeworm eggs in there, yeah, and and they were they were geared towards women, and then they swallow. By the way, you know what's funny? Man, so nasty. Back in those days, when you're talking back when people, like in, with these with these diet days, right? The first diets, there were just as many diets directed to women for weight gain. A lot of people don't know this. Yeah, a lot of I books, saw a lot of those ads. A lot of books and diets that told women, "Don't be skinny anymore. Yeah. Put some weight on your body. Add some curves. Be more curvy." And it was all about eat this. It helps you add more curve to your body, become more voluptuous. That was a huge market <clears throat> demand back then, probably because food was expensive and they were, you know, I'm not eating enough. You yeah, just probably. you were just reminded me of something that I have to admit and share. Uh, I came into the studio the other day, and Doug was here with Brianna his daughter and uh, up on the the big screen TV she was watching um uh, uh, what's it called um, um all american all american thank you Doug and i talked shit about this show mm-hmm. like about a, a week ago or whatever. Yeah. Remember when I said like the teeny boppers were, were oh, this is the football one. We're right? screwing up the algorithm because yeah. they're all like high yeah. school. Don't tell me it's good. Well, so I, I watched the whole thing, right? <laughs> oh my so god. Let, let me explain that. <laughs> so Katrina, she knows, obviously she listens to the show. So she so she and she catches me, she's watching it also with me. And like after and like I think I ended up watching like two or three episodes in a row. And she's just like, So I thought you didn't like this show. I said, you know what? I don't. And she, she's like, why do you keep watching it? I said, it's like junk food. Oh yeah. yeah. I said that's exactly what it reminds me of is mm-hmm. it's so overly dramatic that all the points that they try and make that it's it's like it's it just annoys me but it still it still hooks me. Yeah. And so that was my analogy that I gave her. It's like I know that eating a whole bag of potato chips or you know a, a pound of gummy worms or a hot hot tamales or something is not healthy for me. But if I start, you know, mindlessly doing it, it'll hook me and I'll keep doing that. And I said that is what this reminds me of is I can sit here and tell you that I know it's garbage. Yeah. But because I'm sitting there and I get hooked in, it's like it's so funny how it's like those dating shows. Oh, yes. it's so those it's are great for trash. I, I hate that because when I get caught in something like that, I just don't feel good about myself. Yeah, I don't eat I just, <laughs> like, that's why, why I just waste all my time here. This yeah. is why I'm admitting it. Because you you watch it and you don't gain anything from it like oh. there's no you lose uh, yeah, exactly. you lose, you <laughs> you lose, lose self respect hours of life you but lose it, hours of life isn't that yeah. what it reminds like junk food right totally. doesn't it remind yeah. you of like getting stuck in a bag of chips and hammering the whole thing and you well, feel initially awful it kind of tastes good and then you're just like Ugh, it doesn't feel and you keep eating it yeah, yeah. and anyways, then you feel bad about yourself bleh. after three hours of, of indulging and yeah. you go like what did I just do so <laughs> But I just, I mean, it also speaks to, um, you know, the the formula that they that they put together to create that. I mean, it really is. Mm-hmm. They hook uh, you. It's the nine zero two one zero of this uh, generation is kind of like. Oh, uh, hold on a second. Nine zero two one zero was good. Nah, nah, nah. That was. Nah, nah, nah. That was good. <laughs> you were, you remember it as a fifteen year old. You know what I'm saying? That was Perry, dude. That's my guy. That was cinematic. That's my guy. Glory. Let's not touch nine zero two one zero. But speaking of TV, though, uh, somebody uh, messaged about us or question, asked questions about like the shows. I, I, I said, but I swear we talk about it all the time. If you're not watching uh, the Jordan one on uh, ESPN, oh, yeah. you have to watch that. I mean, that's just great TV right now. They they actually, because of COVID-19, they pushed it up because they knew everybody would be home. Mm. Yeah. So this was, is a documentary? I'm excited yeah. about that. I mm. cannot... Convince Courtney to watch it with me. Really? So I might have to come over, bro. Oh, yeah. Man. Dude, I can't believe she she doesn't like stuff like that at all, huh? No, she hates sports stuff. Oh. She's just like, is this I'm is like, this basketball stuff? Yeah. <laughs> that's who Michael that's who Michael Good Jordan. guess. Yeah. Just kidding. I know who Michael Jordan is. He played for the Cincinnati Bulls. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right. First question is from Grant Satterthwaite. I'm really confused. I hear on the show that you have to progressively overload in order to build muscle. Then in other episodes, I hear that weight is arbitrary and that the mind-muscle connection is paramount in building muscle. And yet, in other episodes, I hear that practicing movements with good technique sends more muscle-building signals. 
What's the real deal? Is it all true? It's, it's all true. All of it. All, yeah, D That's, all the above. I'm pretty sure that I answered underneath. I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure I answered underneath this on Instagram because, yeah, dude, it's it's all true. And, you know, and that's it just did is that, I mean, we make, we, we do uh, single topic episodes a lot where we, we make the case for why something is really important. We're highlighting different components of muscle building. Yeah, and, and it's so. and when we do that, it's not saying everything else doesn't matter. This is the only thing that matters. It's like, listen, this is how important this thing is. People don't realize that, you know, you manipulating tempo, that is so important. And then when we talk about form and technique, they all matter. Yeah. They're all they're all and they're all variables of progressive overload, actually. That's right. Uh, we, we, if if we change so when we say progressive overload, I think people automatically think weight. Right. They think more yes. weight. Right. Which is one way to do it. But really think about it this way challenging yourself more each time. That's mm -hmm. all. So how can you challenge yourself more? Well, you can slow the reps down. You could make them more explosive. You could change your form. You hold and it longer. You yeah. could hold. You could add weight. You could squeeze the target muscle more. Those are all muscle. progressive overload. That's right. Uh, if you go look at um, uh, Brett Contreras, just did an Instagram post a couple days ago, and it's uh, just a little um, you know graphic. It's really good, and it's progressive overload. And then he lists you know all ten different ways to create progressive overload, mm -hmm. and it, it actually encompasses everything that you just listed in this question like it's not yeah. people always assume that that just means adding weight to the bar and there's many ways to overload the body right. now yeah. why is this good to know well it's good to know because you want to be able to have access to multiple techniques and tools to progressively overload your body because focusing on just one so i'll use the example of weight weight is a great way to progressively overload your body especially when you've been working out for short periods of time when you're a beginner or intermediate you should, you should focus on getting stronger. It should be one of the number one things you focus on. But here's why you don't want to just focus on that. At some point, you don't get stronger. If, if that wasn't true, then you'd have guys that would be working out. I would be bench pressing 3,000 pounds by now. I've been working out for 20-something years. Uh, I'd be bench pressing uh, 3,000 pounds and deadlifting 6,000 pounds. Were, dude, by no. the way you talk about <laughs> no, 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 no. It's yeah. like 2,000. <laughs> All right, cool. So, so obviously at some point, you're gonna, it's going to reach its limit. And even before that, your body tends to plateau when you hammer one signal too long. So then what I do is I manipulate other ways of progressively overloading. So if I'm doing overhead press and I get stronger and stronger and stronger, and now I'm finding, oh, it's not working anymore. I'm getting a little bit of shoulder pain. What I can do is slow the rep down. Focus on my form and technique. Squeeze more. Now my muscle is going to respond, and I didn't have to necessarily add weight. Now, bodybuilders are amazing at this. Now, why are bodybuilders so good at this? Because they're trying to build massive, massive muscles and not get hurt, and nobody cares how much they lift when they go on stage anyway. So if you watch a bodybuilder workout, especially the ones that have been doing it for a long time, like Dexter Jackson, uh, Vince Taylor, who competed uh, for a very long time, was uh, very successful – Watch those guys work out, and what you'll see is that they understand this super, super well, and that's why they haven't hurt themselves, even though they've built maximum muscle. When you find bodybuilders that rely a lot on just the weight, then you start to see some injuries. You know, well, Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman, Coleman example. Dorian Yates is another guy that yeah. you know that did that for a while. So you want to have all of these tools in your tool belt, and you want to figure out when to use one and when to not use the other one. And the way that I work it typically is when I start to really gain the great benefits of working with one, as soon as I feel like I'm getting excellent benefits, I stick with it for a little longer, and then I move on to something else. I try not to wait until it stops working, because at that point, it's much more difficult to reverse and then you know try something different. Next question is from Gabs is Rad. With all this extra yeah. time, I find myself trying to fill my day with activity. Is it too much to be doing yoga, long hikes, and walks, and a strength training workout every day? No, I don't think so at all. No. It's, I think all those actually complement each other really well. They do. Now, can they be too much? Well, yeah. If mm. your yoga is extreme intense, if your hikes and walks are extreme intense, and then your strength training is crazy intense probably too much. And so now what does that mean? Depends on the person. Mm -hmm. If you are new to this and you know, you're, you're, you weren't very fit going into this, then you're going to have to really lower the intensity of a lot of these things. Cause it is a lot of activity. If you've been doing them for a long time, um, then you can probably train a little harder. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, I mean, it, it depends on what you're doing right before this. So if you were at a, you know, very high level, um, and, and this is just to maintain 
somewhere close to even the the amount of activity that you were doing before this. Uh, that's just, I mean, that that should be just fine to add strength training to that as well. It's just a matter of like if you're trying to add all this uh, right now, and you know, before that you had a desk job where you're where half the day you're sitting down, and then all of a sudden you know you're strength training, but now you want to cram like yoga, you want to cram hiking, running, everything else all in one day. You know, that might be a little too much volume for you. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you guys a little bit. Uh, it, I I would be okay with 99% of my clients giving me this. Now, they have to do them right though. Right. Yeah. I mean, I when I when I hear yoga, long hikes and walks, I don't see sprinting, you know, marathon. I mean, that's not like long hikes. If you're if your hike is like a just a, you know, slight incline and yeah, level one yeah it's not great like you're not you're not you know, climbing everest right now yeah. and in that like and yoga is really going to complement uh for sure the strength training so if you're strength training yoga is the nice the opposite as long as it's not yeah. you if know it's not cardio it's more like neat then yeah i have no problem well, have, you, have just, you guys ever done power yoga well, I, I mean, that's that can be right. Much. And if they said that power yoga, hiking, you know, uh, you know, Everest and sprinting and then strength <laughs> training, I would definitely go like, don't. but I mean, honestly, a lot of people probably need this yeah, because they were even if they didn't have a, you know, quote unquote, really physically active job like construction or something like that. And they were just moving, though, around the office and, and, and moving like we like we're, we were just explaining in the intro. You know, dude, I, I actually need about all of that just to kind of be close to what I was doing before. Yeah, no, I see. What it's, it really goes down to this. Like you have to listen to your body. If yeah. you apply all of those appropriately and complementary to each other, you're going to be totally fine. If you go into it, because here's why I said what I said. The people that I know that do yoga, hiking, and lift and, and resistance training every single day uh, all the time, the people that I know do that are the kind of people that overdo shit. Mm -hmm. That they go hard at all of it. Yep. And that's why I said what I said. If you're going to do all of those, you got to be smart about it. The way that I would approach this is the yoga would be gentle. The yoga would be would be focused on yeah. you know, flexibility and stability, and it would be rejuvenating. That's what my yoga would feel like. My hikes and walks would also be rejuvenating, enjoying the outdoors, just moving and feeling good. The resistance training is where I would apply a little bit more intensity. That's how I would piece that together. Well, and I day. and I read it that way. That's why I feel that. Sure. Like I, I mean, when I hear yoga by itself, long hikes and walks, uh, I don't, I don't read intensity. I what I read is somebody who now has eight hours a day. They're not probably yeah, they're working. Just moving now. So. Yeah, and 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 those choices because what can happen is, and what I can see myself some days happen is like. I literally don't leave a couch almost all day long, and this would be great. I would yoga, spend a yoga for an hour, then go take a nice long hike for an hour, then go for a thirty-minute walk yeah. a couple times a day, and then I have a strength training episode, our strength training, uh, uh, you know, session. session. I mean, th that to me is phenomenal, and Dude. for most people, should be able to handle. That. I've been I've been mm. in some yoga classes though that are just like, oh, this is this is designed to be strength training. You guys are trying to turn yoga into strength training, or I've done hikes. Jessica's taking me on hikes. I'm like, this is a whole. Oh yeah, other you level. Can, uh, Mission Peak is a, an intense yeah, hike, right? That's yeah. an, that's an intense hike. It's a local hike that's pretty intense, and that every day I think would be a lot on this. And honestly, I mean, I, I'm pro yoga, but I'm more pro mobility. We have a free webinar that's going right now. I would push. I would rather see my client doing that every day, so we can actually fix some issues that they're having. Yoga is great for relaxing and stretching the body. And I think it, I think there's a, a, that's awesome, but I would way rather see if this person is putting this much effort and time into their body and their health, uh, mobility should be in there, which is more specific to what you need to be doing. And if you don't much more individual, if you don't understand what that is, that that's why we have a prime compass where you take a test and then it tells you what you need to do. And then prime pro is all the correctional. Actually, stuff. you can go to mind, mindpumpwebinar.com and you can actually take a free mobility class from Adam. I think it's like 45 or 50 minutes long. You could try that and follow his cues and see for yourself. Next question is from Sarah Skilled. Given that most of us are working out from home now, is there any benefit or drawback to working out barefoot versus flat shoes or cross trainers? H huge benefit, but I'm going to follow it up with this, uh, with this disclaimer, okay? The, there's a massive benefit to working out barefoot, but now if you're used to working out in shoes, your feet are right now barefoot, your weakest link, meaning your feet should dictate how much resistance you use. Your feet should dictate uh, the kind of workouts you do. Because if you're used to the stability of your shoes, where your shoes are literally stabilizing your arches, making sure your feet 
stay in position, and then you take them off. Mm -hmm. Now the muscles and the strength and stability of your feet have to do that. And if you're used to squatting 200 pounds with shoes on, now when you squat, you're probably going to have to go down to 100 pounds and watch your feet and make sure they look perfect. Because if you go to your old workout with shoes off and your feet are weak, you're going to hurt yourself. The odds of hurting yourself are very high. So that's there's a lot of value there, though, because your feet – play a massive role in your body's overall strength and stability. And oftentimes we don't strengthen them because we're reliant on our shoes. I personally love uh, working out barefoot. Um, as far as like recommending it, yeah, I definitely would, uh, you know, echo what, what Sal said. But uh, to start off, definitely as much as you can, walk around your house with your shoes off, your 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 socks off, you know, splay those toes out, you know, really individually, uh, you, you know, work those those toes so that way uh, you can g regain a lot of connection there. The more connection you can gain with your toes and your feet and being able to manipulate your feet uh, the way that they're supposed to, the more stability you're going to provide uh, for your entire body. It's it's pretty it's pretty radical once you get your your feet to work and stabilize you how they how they should. Uh, what that translates to when you go back to, to heavy lifting. So you just got to take it like really gradually uh, if it's not something that you've ever even considered in terms of having your shoes. And I know there's there's different cultures and in, in places where like that's the first thing is you take your shoes off and like, you know, you're in your house with, with your toe, but not everybody does that. I, I go to a lot of people's houses where they're always in their shoes. Mm. So just to at least start with that and then gradually kind of, uh, you know, work your way into adding load, doing ex body weight exercises without uh, shoes, barefoot, and then kind of start to add load gradually as you go. Well, this is uh, kind of connected to the uh, progressive overload question, right? So the way I do barefoot training is I I pair it with the day that I also have decided I'm on, this is like body control and tempo. I'm slowing down. I'm looking at my technique. I'm pausing at the bottom of, of my squats. And so the load is way lower than what I am when I'm like going for maximal. Like when I'm trying to, you know, hit a PR or lift really, really heavy and I'm doing threes or five uh, reps per set, this is, I'm not going to do this. But when I'm going to go in, I'm like, you know what? Today is all about how I move. I want to be connected to my body. I'm going to slow down the tempo. I want to feel through everything. And that is a way of progressive overloading. Even though I'm not lit putting more weight on the bar, I'm going to challenge my body in a different way. And these are the days that I love to take my shoes off. I'm like, I'm going to just do, I'm going to do walking lunges, just my body weight. And I'm going to do it barefoot. And I'm going to grip the floor every step and, and, and really evaluate my technique and how I drive out of the hole, how I land, like, and I, and I get really detailed about it. this is also, I think, uh, what helps me keep sane and lifting for as long as I've been lifting is sometimes that's the goal for the day. I don't get so caught up in muscle and body fat and uh, strength mm -hmm. gains. Sometimes it's like, can I get barefoot? And can I do some basic movements like walking lunges and body weight squats and do these things and single leg toe touches and like really do it perfect barefoot? And that is can be a very challenging workout, especially if you never do it. And so, you know, and I'll get on a kick for a while where that'll be the focus. The focus is I'm going to do all this stuff barefoot. But I have to start way low, and I'm going really slow and controlled, and there's not a lot of load on me. But what a great way to challenge the body and get connected. The mistake that people make is they hear us talk about how beneficial it is to do barefoot training, and then they just all they do is they do their exact routine they would normally do, and they just take their shoes off. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not a good idea because your body is not used to that, and it's for sure, like Sal said, that this is your feet are now your weakest link. And, and you're expecting without that support from the shoe to go do the same things, like not a good idea. Next question is from Johnny FP 23. <clears throat> what causes your knees to cave in when you squat and how do you fix this problem? You know, what's funny about this question is if you asked me this question seven years ago, um, the answer I would have given you is different than what I would say today. Almost always the answer I would have given you before was, Oh, your it's in it's coming from your hips. Your abductors are over. You know your abductors are are not strong enough. Your adductors are Overactive. overpowering. Yeah. You know, so in other words, your inner thighs are pulling yeah. in harder than your outer thighs can stabilize. Mm -hmm. Now I would say this: it could be that, or it could be coming from your feet. When your feet 
uh, cave in, when your feet flatten, you don't have good ankle you know, stability and mobility, um, that can also cause your knees to cave in and it, it, with a squat. So when you're doing a squat and you notice your knees have that tendency to move in, you got to look at both. Look at your feet. That's actually where I would start because it's at the bottom. That's the thing that connects you to the floor. Look at your feet. Test your ankle mobility. Am I maintaining an arch? Am, are, is my ankle mobility limiting to the point where it makes my feet really want to turn out because they're really, really tight because that'll cause your knees to go in? Mm. If your feet and ankles look really good, then you can move up to the hips and say, okay, uh, maybe I can put a band around my knees, push the band around wi- out while I squat to help strengthen more stability uh, in the abductors. This is uh, one of my favorites to help people out with now. Um, uh, and to your point, Sal, like this, when I saw Doctor Brink, like this really like was eye opening. And we talk about parash- paradigm shattering moments all the time. This was for me because, like you, I thought it was all like glute med stuff, like stuff related to the hip. And you know, my glute med wasn't firing enough. I wasn't. I didn't have good hip control, and so my my knees were collapsing in, and I'm weak. And that was everything. Where what I've found now, especially after I was, it was pointed out in myself. Uh, that the breakdown was in my feet, and now more so than ever, I I see that first. So mo and and it's I, I think it's just more common because we all wear shoes all day long. Back to this question we just had; these all actually feed into each other really nicely. Is the you know if you don't have good foot strength, and you just and then you go and you train, what ends up happening is that the the feet flatten or pronate; they roll in. And that's what makes the knee knee collapse knee collapse in now. And what ends up happening when you just keep training and exercising with that issue, you just strengthen that that pattern. We talked about this the other day in the podcast. Like that just becomes the the default pattern, and you go to that. So it just gets harder to fix it if you don't learn to address it. Mm-hmm. So I always take somebody uh, get that person barefoot so they can see. And then uh, you know Brink always gives the, the the triangle tip where if you think of your 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 toes. Uh, all, you know, think of them like the, the top of, or the, the point of the triangle is your heel. And then the, the top, the other side of the triangle is your, your pinky toe and your big toe. And you're trying to keep that triangle the entire time. You're not letting, you're not letting those, those three points of contact ever come off the floor when you squat down. So thinking about that first, just that in itself will already start to keep the knee from wanting to fall in. The other thing, this is also priming, right? So I, that same person, uh, I know that if your knees have been collapsing in and the feet have been flattening, I also know that you, you're probably not really connected to your glute meat. And the glute meat is responsible for externally rotating the femur or that lateral movement side to side. And that's also what will engage. If I were to stand you still or sit you in a squat and say, push your knees out, mm-hmm. the glute meat is what kind of kicks the knees out for you. And so I know that that's dormant or like I say, turned off, right? That's turned off. You're not firing it. So what I want to do is I'm going to take you and do tube walking mm-hmm. uh, before. So I'm going to make you to prime it, get you connected to that glute med, to that muscle that's responsible for pushing the knees out, and I'm going to address the feet. Those two things alone should make a huge difference right away when you go into squatting. You're now aware of your feet being planted and and not letting them roll in when you squat down, and then you're, oh, you've also primed the glute med. And then the third thing that you may have to do if it's really bad, because sometimes this same person – uh, because of everything I just told you, the internal rotation of the femur, you also have a really tight IT. So I might foam roll your IT to to relieve that, to like kind of like let calm the central nervous system down. So the first thing is I'm going to roll the IT, then I'm going to teach you control of your feet, so you your feet are nice and planted on the ground, and then I'm going to prime your glute med by doing lateral tube walks. If I do that to this person, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, uh, it will address this issue, and you just got to be consistent. That's with the it. most common I've probably seen with this, uh, with that happening with the knees coming in. I have also though seen, uh, you know, some external rotation of the feet to, to also widen the base of support, and then the knees compensate as a, as a, uh, you know, byproduct of that too. So. Uh, just to do the the priming is essential for these types of things, and then also like carrying that into uh, correction of your squat and being able to apply different uh, techniques with that to push the the mm. knees out and really like gain more muscle tension uh, within those compound movements uh, to start to train and to program your body to make that you know a, a, an automatic stabilization technique that you apply. Yeah. Now, by the way, the reason why you don't want your your knees to cave in just in case you're listening you're like well what's the big deal 
uh, over time that'll cause problems. It's oh, just yeah. it's just moving the joints in ways that are not are suboptimal. And you over want time, a nice groove in your knee so they're not tracking out. Yeah, and over time you're just you're just stressing the ligaments on the sides of the knee, or you're 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 working the hips in a way that aren't isn't uh, beneficial over time. And so you'll just develop problems, and then you'll get into a position where you're like, I can't squat anymore because it. It hurts too much. And that's part of the reason why a lot of people don't squat right. because they already have this issue. It's very, very common. Yeah, so squats feel bad. They yeah. feel uncomfortable. And they go to do a squat and they feel pain in their knee or they feel pain in their hips or they feel pain in their low back. And a lot of times it's related to all of what we're talking about right now. And if you could just get this person to open those hips up, gain better control, mm -hmm. maybe re foam roll the IT, get good control of the feet. Now all of a sudden, oh shit, I can squat. I don't and feel that pain. And it feels good. Yeah. And you get yeah. great results from it. Look, if you like what we said in this episode, if you found it informational, uh, go to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. Ton of free ones there. Lots more great information there. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.